welcome to the 31st episode of the series Decolonizing the Mind. Today, um, I'm going to talk about uh, Palestine. Uh, my brother, uh, Imam al Asi is still ill. I wish him the best. Uh, because we had to plan, we had planned a closing session on series on the DTM and the Quran, <clears throat> but uh, you know he uh, he still suffers from uh, uh, his illness, and I hope uh, he will get soon uh, better so that we can conclude our series. <clears throat> now, I found an interesting article. Uh, an interesting interview uh, with uh, Osama Hamdan of the Politburo of Hamas. But before I go there, <clears throat> let's say the fact. Yeah, the genocide now has claimed, has killed 29,000 Palestinians in Gaza, 70,000 wounded. And the attack on Rafah is being prepared against 1.4 million people, shaking shelter in Rafa, <clears throat> uh, driven by the bombardments of the Zionists and are now being target for annihilation. Since the start of the genocide, an additional 10,000 Palestinians had been put in prison in, uh, in Palestine by the Zionists. So there's a horrible tragedy going on now, uh, as we all can follow it uh, through the news. So I mentioned this article, which appeared in Press TV uh, website. <clears throat> it's an interview with Osama Hamdan, a uh, member of the Politburo of Hamas. And it sheds some light on the analysis of Hamas uh, of the situation of the liberation movement and why October 7 was necessary. And he also talks about where the liberation movement stands now and how to move forward. Very interesting and intriguing interview. So what he uh, <clears throat> says is this. They are looking at the policy of Netanyahu. And the policy of Netanyahu is very clear and the Palestinian issue within the next four years. Uh, that was his plan, and he presented it at the United Nations in 2023, where he presented a map with no Palestinian uh, territories in it. It was all green. So how do they want to end the Palestinian issue? First of all, instrumental in this was the collaboration with the Arab nations through the Abraham Accords, Accords <clears throat> which would then uh, stabilize and normalize relations between the collaborative uh, regimes of Arab nations and Israel under the sponsorship of the United States. So that was the vision of Western Asia. <clears throat> and obviously, part of that vision was that once these relations were established, they would go after, once they, they kill off the Palestinian resistance, they will go after Hezbollah. Uh, they failed in Syria, but ultimately they want to go after Iran. So there was also a plan, a program to seize the occupied city of Al-Quds, Jerusalem, whose eastern part is sought by Palestinians as the capital of the future state. So by seizing the occupied city, you end the dream of a Palestinian state with Al-Quds as its capital. And then <clears throat> they want to bring in 1 million new settlers from outside of Palestine to the occupied territories and transfer ownership of Palestinians' real estate to Zionists. So they bring in the 1 million settlers, they take the land the remaining land of Palestine and establish a full Jewish state on Palestinian lands with ethnic cleansing. <clears throat> and before the attack on October 7, 
they all, the scientists already stepped up their process of liquidating the resistance. 500 people had already been killed in the West Dev prior to the uh, October 7th attack in just a couple of few months and 3,000 were wounded and arrested. So Hamdan says, look, you have two options. You do nothing and they continue to take your land and kill you or you resist and know that with resistance will be a backfire. So they know that the October 7th attack would be countered by a huge backfire run because killing 12,000 uh, Israelis and doing what they've done by invading uh, uh, the occupied lands <clears throat> is mind blowing. So with resistance, the enemy knows that it's paying a price for the occupation and you keep the hope alive that there can be an end to occupation and oppression. And your end game is force the enemy to leave your land. Now, for many Palestinians who have grown up with the two-state solution, this is unimaginable. Israel is so strong, backed by the strongest military power in the world, the United States. How can you defeat them? And October 7 gave the message that it is possible. <clears throat> So they prepared for it and they said the attack should be on a grand scale to shake up the whole power structure, the political power structure. And knowing the capabilities, technically, intelligence wise, the 24 seven monitoring of Palestine in detail, the, the planning should be meticulously well and should avoid preemptive actions. And they know that the response would be massive. And they know that a massive response would then open a dynamic that would totally, totally change the status quo and bring the liberation struggle to the next level, although with huge sacrifices. So Hamdam says, look, <clears throat> the whole strategy of uh, Netanyahu was an existential threat to the liberation movement. So we needed to do something dramatic in order to create a situation and a dynamics where we could end the uh, occupation. So, and that is exactly what happened. The Al-Aqsa storm as the operation of October 7th was coined, stopped the US plan in the region, marked the end of the Netanyahu's dream. And we see it the uh, enormous solidarity uh, of um, for Palestine and the world, it's there. Hamas popularity rose in Gaza, where the heaviest casualties are falling. <clears throat> Despite the genocide, people feel that there is a chance for liberation that is now higher than ever. And then Hamdan says, with this uh, popularity comes increased responsibility. How to move forward with this level of trust? And he says the mechanism is that Palestinian people should be able to hold election to elect their leadership. You can't appoint it, it should be elected. Now, <clears throat> Netanyahu presented a plan to his cabinet about the post Gaza war period. And this is a fantasy of, of him and is supported by the United States. The plan has been uh, approved by the United States and it contains the following elements. Close off Gaza's southern border with Egypt, giving Israel complete control of entry and exit from the enclave. So it's not Egypt that is trusted with monitoring the southern border with Egypt. Israel will monitor the border between Gaza and Egypt. And the Egyptians haven't reacted to that plan yet. We'll have to see. Then the second point, Israel will have security control over the entire west of Jordan, which includes all of West Bank. So they are saying we don't rely anymore on the security apparatus of the Palestinian Authority. So there are 
collaboration of the Palestinian Authority with the Israeli security forces has led to nothing in the analysis of the Zionists. So they say, we have to do it on our own. And then in Gaza, they will impose a civil administration and an educational system. And the civil administration, which was funded by Qatar, uh, and also by the United Nations uh, 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 refugee organizations. They say, we'll cut off the funding of Qatar, we'll cut off the funding of the United States, uh, United Nations, and replace it with responsible, so-called responsible international agencies. And we'll uh, do a overhaul of the educational system in Gaza, which is full of anti-Semitism and hatred for Israel and put up a system of de-radicalization in the educational system. And to be clear, nobody is going to force on us a two-state solution. There will be no Palestinian state. This is the plan, the post-Gaza war plan of Netanyahu, which is a fantasy. None of this will be realized and anybody with some common sense can see that. <clears throat> now, Hamden says they have an own plan of the post-Gaza war, <clears throat> meaning this. He says Hamas doesn't strive to be the sole representative of the Palestinian people. So they are constant contacts with all the factions in, um, in Palestine. And they've reached an agreement with all these factions uh, of the resistance for the post-war approach. And he's talking about all the factions that will continue to work for the total liberation of Palestine, meaning the armed struggle will continue. And this is just a temporary phase uh, to prepare for the total liberation. And it says in the agreement that they reach with all the factions, they talk about the transitional government in which all factions are represented and they will hold elections and begin the reconstructing process of Gaza. <clears throat> now, this is an interesting uh, analysis and an interesting vision of Hamas. You could look it uh, up. <clears throat> um, I talk about uh, Palestine and Israel extensively in a book. You could look it in the index and you could look the, the link uh, to the interview with uh, Hamdan is in a PDF which you can download on sandohira.com. And um, if you want to support the channel, subscribe to it, share it with friends, families, and colleagues, and encourage them to subscribe. Get involved in discussion groups. And if you want to make a donation, look at sandohira.com on how to do that. Thank you for your attention. <clears throat>